Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we are going to talk about <clears throat> Damonette Flesh. Ah. So um, we're going to talk about basically how to do how, my recipe for Damonette Skin Tone which my color scheme is not exactly the let's call it Slanesh standard that is to say like pale whiter purple skin uh, and you know I, I hew pretty close to it because I think that's just Slanesh in my mind. Um, but there's obviously lots of valid color schemes out there. So I'm going to take you through the colors and paints that I use, but really what I want this tutorial to be about is sort of the lessons and ways that people think about painting flesh tone in general, and hopefully I can give you some good tips regardless of the colors you use. So just for questions, if it's asked, here are the colors we'll be using that are on my palette. We start out with a little scale 75 black leather, it's going to be our deepest shadow. We've got some War Colors Flesh 5, which is a completely unique flesh tone. I really love this color. It's absolutely an amazing pickup. We have some uh, Reaper Vampiric Shadow, which is a nice little uh, sort of warm gray flesh. And then we have some Bold Titanium White from Pro Acryl. Uh, those are going to be the main transition of our skin. I don't normally recommend pure white in skin tone beyond well, really ever um, because it makes things look unnatural, especially skin, but since we're painting a demon, it should look a little unnatural. And I accidentally put some of my white into a drop of water on here, and so you can see that that's happening, but that's no big deal. When we paint flesh tone, it's also very important to have interference colors. Interference colors are colors that, that are beyond the normal scope. So if this were to be a, a Caucasian uh, skin tone transition, then I would, you know, that those could be things like uh, purples and crimsons and stuff like that. In this case, our two interference colors are going to be much the same uh, because we still want to have some life in this, some semblance of it. So here we have Elendil Violet from uh, Scale 75 Fantasy and Games to push a little bit of the purple in. And we have some pink glaze from War Colors, which is their glaze line is uh, really fantastic. And I have a review of that on my channel as well, if you're curious. Uh, so that's the paints. I've also got a little flow improver sort of down here on my palette, off camera. There it is, you can just kind of see it shiny, uh, as always. So let's begin. Uh, I'll keep the edge of my paper towel in shot. I'm actually gonna begin by sort of getting the edge of my paper towel wet here. Uh, I don't want it to be dry because I'm gonna often wipe my brush in this area. And if the paper towel is nice and wet, not as much of the liquid will wick out. Uh, so we're gonna just dip into the flow improver there and then wipe it into the water. And then what I'm actually gonna do is grab some of this black leather. So the first way I, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on this one leg, okay? That way, because if I do the whole thing, this will take way too long. So the first thing I like to do is sort of establish my shadows and make sure I've got some nice deep shadows running up against everything. In this case, she has this little bejangle on her leg, these things I hate. Uh, if you have stuff like that, you can kind of, uh, just ignore it or paint around it. Make sure you create your shadow. But what I'm doing is figuring out where am I going to place some semblance of my deepest shadows. And this doesn't have to be final. And that's sort of the first thing I want to say about flesh tone. I think when a lot of people paint like this, they would get scared putting really, this is pretty thick paint I'm using here. And I think a lot of people get sort of worried about stuff like that. They're like, well, I don't want to put really thick paint on because, you know, then I got to paint over it or something. They try to People try to generally be like first time final, like one and done with this stuff. And that's the first and most important thing I can tell you about um, flesh tone. So there I just added a little liquid to my brush by literally you saw me touching it to the wet part of the paper towel. And that just thinned out my paint into a glaze right there. No additional work necessary. Um, is that flesh requires covering over colors in lots and lots of layers because your flesh is sort of a translucent substance. We don't think of it like that, but it is. If I put a, you know, a flashlight behind my thumb, you can see through it, right? Um, your skin is not opaque. Uh, and so by creating lots of layers of color, we actually make it so it's, we have the same effect. The next thing I'm gonna do is establish just some high highlights here. So I'm gonna take a little white and figure out where I want that, those. And that'll be here on the knee. And in general, when I do highlights like this, I actually over highlight. That is to say, I take the white 
farther than what I want it to actually be in the end. By the way, I didn't mention it, but of course this was all just over a standard zenithal is how I started. This was just black, white, gray, nothing else weird going on. Okay, so that's going to be my highlights on the leg. Yeah, that looks good. So once we've got those two sort of areas established, right, the next thing we're going to do is just bring this all together. That's really all we're doing from here. Uh, and the reason that I start by going really high, and I realize I just want to get a little bit more of the back there. The reason I start by going really high and going really low is because if I then sort of squint my eyes and look at it, do I have things placed where I would expect light to be? And the answer there is mostly yes. Now, I'm starting on the leg. I would probably, if I were doing this from, because it's a nice big area with interesting transitions that'll show on camera well, but if I were doing this uh, for myself, I would probably actually start up here and kind of sketch out the face in this top part because this will be the area of the most light. So when I, when I end up covering this over and stuff like that and blending this together, one thing I think about when I'm doing a fig like this is this is the spot that needs the most attention right here because we want to be looking at her face. And where we want to end up is effectively like this girl over here, okay? Now, I, wouldn't, I would normally just be doing the flesh straight, but I added this, these other colors just because I noticed that when I do these tutorials and I do you know, something like skin and everything else is just gray and white, it really doesn't show. So I added these other colors here just so that it's properly framed. I wouldn't normally start by laying down these colors, but that was just a quick glaze of the blue and the purple where they're gonna end up being. Okay, so that being done, now that we've got these in place and they're dry, right? Now we're gonna go ahead and start working the two together. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of the gray. It's very thin, it's mixed in with the flesh tone. And I'm just gonna start basically pulling it down in that area. That's a little too thin. And that's all right, that can happen. No big deal if we end up a little too thin. And you can see how I'm covering over a lot of my work like a lot of the previous colors, but some of it still shows through. You notice there's a transition there. Go into my darker color here, my flesh five, and now we're gonna work, we're going Bob Ross style. We're working wet on wet, okay? One of the things I don't want to have happen, and one of the reasons I sort of start with that blend is because I want to work wet on wet. I want these paints to get up in each other's business, start blending around. <laughs> Grab a little bit of my darkest color there. Just kind of mix it into whatever's on my brush. Notice I have not wiped or cleaned my brush in any way, shape, or form, all right? Every so often I'll come over here to the paper towel, but for the most part, that was the first time I wiped my brush and all that. And the only time I really tend to wipe my brush is when I'm gonna go back from like light to dark. So if I was working, uh, if I was working really dark and I need to go back to really light, then what I'll do is I'll just kind of wipe the brush and get going from there. You notice I don't try to clean it all the way. And that's because I want these colors to start bleeding into each other a little bit. Having these colors get a little messy is advantageous. Now you do have to be careful when you're doing this that you don't pull paint up, of course, but as long as you're relatively careful and you just kind of move your way around the surface, you can generally avoid that. It sort of just comes from experience and knowing how far you can push your paints. If you do happen to pull up paint or something like that, the right answer is just stop, let it dry, and then go back and you can keep working. Because once this first wet on wet layer dries, I can go back and do this again. There's nothing stopping me from doing further layers of this sort of blend. And in fact, it would be very beneficial to do so, right? Because uh, having then that second interference layer in there will create more visual interest, more different layers of color sort of stacked on each other, and more richness uh, of the tone. And that's what we ultimately want. Sorry, there's a little bit here that's just like on the back side that's visible that I'm trying to get. Her little dressy flaps are annoying, admittedly. There we go. Okay, so you can see now 
how we've got the shape of that out there. We've got a nice transition into the shadows. The musculature is called out. So now what I do, now it's time to clean the brush, let all that dry, and see how it looks. And then, I'm, well, that's drying because it only take a minute or two. I've never used a hair dryer in my life on a figure, and I, 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 I don't understand. Paint dries faster than that. I don't, I don't work thick enough that that's ever necessary. Um, but I want to talk about sort of how, once all this dries, I need to look and make sure I've got what I want going on here. And so, like in the end, I know she'll have tattoos and stuff on her legs, so I know where I'll go. But as that all sets, the, you'll notice the color tones change a little. And that's important. When you're working like real fast, wet on wet like that, it's not going to look exactly the same wet as it will dry, and that's because when it's wet, the paint is glossy. And once it sort of mats out or even goes to satin or whatever you know you happen to be using, you'll have a different effect. So it is important even when you're working like this to start to pause every so often. What I generally do is I'll then move to a, you know like the next leg, right? So my answer would be if I was letting this dry, I would actually just move over to this leg and start working it, and then I'll go back and finish here. But the next thing we want to do is we want to add in our color tones where appropriate. So this is where we get to the purple and the pink glaze, uh, assuming we're happy with this. And there's a little spot here I'm not super happy with. So we're going to mix a little bit of that. Okay. There we go. Let's pull a little more of that white up in there. There we go. Let's get that side shadowed down just a little. So remember when I said it's not about once and done? This is that exact example. Like I have to work my way around the figure over and over again, making sure that I'm checking everything, that I like how the colors are looking, you know? Basically, you're going to keep moving around. And as long as you're working relatively thin like this, I mean, I could do this for hours. I could put a hundred of these thin layers on here. It would not change anything. People are very afraid of paint on their miniature for some reason, like they're gonna obscure detail. It only obscures detail when you like go into hyper thick paint out of the pot and go and blot it on there and then stop. You can use a really thick paint on your miniature as long as you then smooth it out and smooth it around. You know, oil paints that go on canvas are generally pretty thick, but people can still draw it out really thin. They just put it on and then push it around with their brush a lot. All right. To know that that's all dry, let's get to our interference colors. So what I want to do is I want to take a little of my purple, move a little flow aid, we're going to thin that way down into a glaze. You can thin into a glaze in a lot of different ways. You can use water, you can use medium. What you need to do largely depends on the brand of paint you're using and how far you can push the pigment. But now what I'm going to do is just over the middle up into those dark spaces. I'm going to push that purple. I'm going to wipe my brush and then I'm just going to feather the edge. All right, so now I get that nice purple tone up in there. You can also take a little bit of that purple glaze, mix it with a little bit of my mid tones if I want, still keep it thin, and then further smooth out that edge. In case you haven't noticed, this is a lot of what it is. It's a lot of just slowly pushing this back and forth. All right? So now I have that nice purple tone up there. It's just a, a real thin hint of it. And that's ultimately what I want. Grab a little more of that purple glaze. We'll get it down here into this shadow, down here in between the feet. That's a nice area for it. Maybe here under the leg a little. Maybe put a second layer of it up here. Now that that's nice and dry. That way that's pronounced. Right? And there we go. And that's good. That's all we needed. But it, that little bit of color, you can see how much richer that looks now that that's on there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of our pink glaze. 
Now this is something I'm going to use a lot more around the face. That's how thin that is. And what I want to do over there is create a glaze layer right below that purple and right where we would have joints and things where theoretically on a human there would be blood. Now, I understand this is a demon. It's probably not actually blood. That's okay. The reality is we as human beings are trained to say that things look realistic when they have that color palette in them. So even when it's very slight like that, right? It makes a big difference. That's basically it. Like, there you go. That's your, and you can see now I've got that skin. Now there's all sorts of other stuff you could do here. I could take my pink glaze. I could mix it with some of my uh, near shadow color to get that slightly warmer. And then I could blend some of that in. I can add in a little white to it to get something that's near a highlight to bring that down and make that more interesting. Like by just slowly mixing all these colors together, what we end up with is something that's just a lot more visually compelling. And when we do that initial work as part of the wet blend, it's really not that time consuming to do this. I mean, this took, I understand I'm, it took me 15 minutes sitting here talking to do a leg and you're probably like, Vince, I've got 70 Damonettes. What the heck are you talking about? That wasn't time consuming. Well, what I'll say is when you're working, I'm, I'm explaining what I'm doing as I'm going, but as you tend to work, you will tend to have this go a lot faster. Like I did use this exact process more or less on 70 Damonettes and you can do it. It's, it, you know, it's totally doable. It takes a little bit of time, but what that's worth it doesn't, right? So there we go. Pumped out that highlight just a little bit there. So we get to that point. So that's, that's uh, Damonette's skin. Again, the co exact colors I used aren't really that relevant. You could use any colors. And by the way, this could be done with any kind of skin. The trick is you establish that gradient and then you work in your interference colors to add life into the skin. And even in the case of a weird, otherworldly, hellscape, chaos realm demon, you still want it to feel a little bit alive. So there you go. That's how I do that skin. I'll finish up all the rest of her and I'll put a picture up at the end of her all finished and ready to go so you can see how that looks. But as always, if you liked this, give it a like. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future topics for hobby cheating, feel free to drop that down below. I always appreciate suggestions for future topics. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one. And we'll see you next time.